And good evening and thanks for joining us here on our Facebook Live discussion tonight here on the Montana Television Network. I'm Jay Cohn and hopefully you had a chance to watch our Hidden Bias uh, of Good People special that just concluded across the Montana Television Network. We're here to get uh, your thoughts on this and maybe you can ask a few questions as we continue this discussion about uh, hidden bias in our communities, in our societies and in our uh, lives today. Again, I'm Jay Cohn with uh, MTN News, and it's my uh, pleasure to be able to host this uh, Facebook Live discussion with you tonight. I want to bring in our, our guests, our local experts, who have uh, decided to contribute their time tonight to help us discuss this important issue. First of all, we'd like to uh, welcome to the program uh, Debbie uh, Desjardins of Billings. Debbie is a Native American graphic designer uh, based here in Billings. Uh, Debbie, good to see you. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you, Jay. Also joining us, uh, my pleasure to welcome William B. Hendry, who is the founder and CEO of BeBetterWorld.org. Uh, he's also based here in Billings. William, uh, his work involves presentations all across the country on the topics of diversity and inclusion in the workplace. So William, thank you for joining us. I'm gonna ask both of you uh, as we get started tonight to introduce yourselves a little more to our, uh, our viewers and just kind of, uh, introduce yourself, if you will. Debbie, I'm going to have you go first. Okay. Thank you, Jay. Uh, my name is Debbie Desjardins. I own two businesses. Uh, the first one's Debbie Desjardins Design. Um, I design cards. They're start quilt cards, um, um, kind of telling about the uh, Assiniboine background, the culture on the back of them. And I'm also co-owner of Kea LLC, which is a magazine business my brother and I own, and it is a um, 14 page magazine that goes out to native people all over the state of Montana and in various other states. So it's been about a year and a half of us um, with the magazine business and it's been a lot of fun. So thank you. If you uh, can share with our participants a little bit about your background, you grew up in Billings and you are an enrolled member of the uh, Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa Indians with a uh, descendants in the Assiniboine tribe. Can you expand on that just a little bit to start with that? Oh, you bet, yeah. I'm enrolled Turtle Mountain Chippewa, that's out of North Dakota um, from my dad's side. And then my mom's side is Assiniboine. Um, so I probably know more of my Assiniboine descendancy than anything. Um, and that's from the Fort Peck Reservation. She's also enrolled in Fort Belknap Reservation. So I have a lot of different ties there. Moved here to Billings about five years ago. Moved back. I actually grew up here, left for a long time, and then moved back about five years ago and started my businesses. William, I'm going to ask you to do the same. A lot of people uh, maybe have seen you here in Billings. You say you've been living here for 11 years, but I want to really know more from about you, how you ended up here. But first, tell me about BeBetterWorld.org. Yeah, so Be Better World uh, started about four years ago as a national anti-bullying program. And we use a three-prong approach to uh, build resiliency. We try to build up kids and we try to make sure that parents are trained in the right uh, in the right methodology to, order to be able to help kids appropriately. Um, I started that four years ago. And in the interim of that, I've also been doing national speaking and training on diversity and inclusion throughout the, throughout the, uh, throughout the nation, actually. Some of your background, you say you're a certified speaker, author, trainer, and coach. So we uh, really have a wide a range of uh, expertise. So uh, just for our viewers joining us on Facebook, and by the way, they're joining us on the Facebook pages tonight of KTVQ here in Billings, KRTV in Great Falls, KTVH in Helena, and KXLH in Butte. So we've got a wide uh, uh, audience across the state of Montana tonight. Um, Let's talk about the aha moment. They were talking about, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Marks was talking about the aha moment. I'm just gonna throw it open. Uh, Deb, did you have an aha moment in this program tonight? And I realized he talked really fast. It was hard for me to right. really keep up with so much good information that seemed to be moving pretty, pretty quickly. He was wonderful at his presentation, but yeah, he was speaking really fast. Um, I think my takeaway, was, yeah, how positive um, and the way he explained it to everybody. But a lot of it, like, you know, being Native American, I could see, you know, um, some of the things he was talking about probably from a different perspective than a lot of people. So I really liked when he talked about, you know, Native Americans in it. 
So I thought it was great. William, did you have an aha moment? I guess. Yeah, so, I, yeah, so actually my aha moment was before the show started and the <laughs> fact that our community has actually embraced the fact that we are willing to not only listen, but actually take action. So everything that he said just supported that. But I'm really proud that our community stepped up and actually had the doctor on that is to actually speak about that. Tell us how you ended up in Billings 11 years ago, if it, that time frame is still accurate. That, that time frame is accurate. I actually used to run blood centers across the the north. Um, I ran the blood center up on 15th and Grand for about nine years. So that's what brought me to Billings. And how did you get involved in inclusivity and diversity training and uh, with the Be Better World? So I was born, dot, 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 <laughs> right? And so my, so, so my entire life has been trying to help people understand and provide solutions and just provide knowledge to individuals who want to open up their, just open up their portfolio of learning. And that's what I try to do for people. William, when we talked earlier um, and we were getting ready to uh, encourage people to watch this show, you gave me the three R's of how you start to present this to people. Could you go over that for us? Yeah, so we talk about respect, resiliency, and the one that I always talk about that I didn't mention is the reaction to it, right? And so I switched those three words up, or I three or four words up, but respect, resiliency, and the reaction. And, and I think if, if people understand that, you know, hey, we recognize that we have an issue, we how do we respond to that? And then how do we become doing enough to make things happen as we move forward. Because a lot of times we have these programs and what we will realize is that there's no sustainability. And so what I want to create in our community and beyond is that we sustain this so we don't have to keep having these, what I call opening conversations about, about what's going on. And Deb, how about you? As you listen to uh, the good doctor and his uh, presentation, what, what really struck a chord with you? How do we move this conversation to action maybe is, more of the generic question. I think, you know, um, maybe in schools, you know, like we were talking earlier that it's the younger kids that are gonna, you know, growing up and learning something now. Um, I remember in first grade, moving from the reservation to Billings, they asked the simple question of what's your favorite food? And I couldn't wait for my turn. I was like halfway through 30 kids. And they got up to me and said, what's your favorite food? And I said, cow guts, <laughs> which I thought was an awesome question, answer for it because that's, I couldn't wait because that's what I was eating, um, tripe soup. But everyone laughed. And then that's when I thought, okay, I guess I'm a little different than everybody, you know? But it would have been cool if, you know, if the teacher said, hey, we have, you know, different people that eat different food and, you know, kind of keeping an open conversation instead of just pointing and making fun of someone. Interesting. So you kind of uh, experienced that uh, mm -hmm. laughter shame. It's like, oh, well, I thought I was going to contribute and everyone laughs. You have to really question yourself, which I think is one of the messages about uh, that you have, William, is you have to believe in yourself. You have to have confidence in uh, your own ability to uh, to deal with almost any situation. Yeah. And I find that from, you know, eight years old to 80 years old. I think it's very, very important that you feel that self-confidence and that's why resiliency is so important um, because we all do come from different backgrounds and different experiences and we only know what we know from our own experience. But if you're open to learning something new, that's why I love this conversation and I'm willing to have it even if it's uncomfortable for some. I think it's very important to have. Yeah, the uncomfortability of this conversation is something that uh, I think cuts across age groups, uh, races, people's background. How about the implicit bias when you say I'm from I'm from Montana? What what does that conjure up? What are the what's the the bias people get in their mind when you say I'm from Montana? I guess I'll answer this. Uh, yeah, please. I've lived all over the U.S. and so when I would say I'm from Montana, they would think outdoorsy and cool. So. Everywhere I move, they're going, yeah, really? And I think that was kind of one of the reasons I moved back because I'm outdoorsy and cool. <laughs> <laughs> what am I you're getting more cool the longer you live here, or more outdoorsy you're to fit in maybe? Uh, no, actually, I'm, I'm still a, I'm still a city boy, but uh, <laughs> I do have a healthy respect for where I live. So, you know, I, I applaud those who are outdoorsy and who are cool. I just haven't, I haven't met that cool factor yet. <laughs> 
<laughs> or working on it day by day. As I say, it's a day-to-day -day thing. Um, sure. I think it's interesting that uh, our uh, parent company here at uh, KTVQ and all the MTN stations, the EW Scripps Company, feels that this is uh, an important national dialogue to uh, engage our viewers in. And uh, I don't think it's uh, specific just to television, but corporate America feels this is very important. William, as you uh, see this gain traction across the country, uh, the good doctor said it's really not a fad. You know, maybe it's kind of an in thing to do, but this is something that uh, we hope isn't a fad that people can take, uh, learn something tonight and take it with them and apply it to their day to day life. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. And that's what I tell people all the time. If you're just trying to check the box, just stay away from it, right? I mean, because you're going to do more harm than hurt. But if you really want to create an environment that is completely inclusive, you know, I I'm, I, I really applaud this station and all of those people who are trying to do that. Because, again, I understand, too, that this is not an easy conversation for any ethnicity. And so when you're having this conversation and you're willing to have it and under, understanding the pains that go through it, you know, I just applaud anybody who's willing to take that step. How about you, Deb? Um, as you uh, develop your business, let's talk about your Debbie's design business, which is uh, um, your calling card these days. And I was reading about you uh, online and the cool things you've done with uh, the Native American art. You've started your own magazine uh, and it's, your goal to have that magazine available and read across every reservation of Native America around the, the nation yeah. and reach every Native American citizen, actually. Tell us about, that's a that's a pretty uh, lofty goal. Right, I know, <laughs> these really big goals. Um, yeah, that, that was our um, intent from the very beginning and we're slowly getting there, my brother and I. Um, and it's, it's to teach, Native people, healthy eating um, and exercise and wellness. Um, and we started it here in Montana, like I said, but we're slowly growing. Um, we hit about seven different states with the commodity program, which is the FDPIR program. Um, and there's a bunch of other programs that we're working with now um, to take us nationwide. So we'll know, I think this spring, if we're gonna be, get picked up across the US. But for now, we're just trying to help each reservation we can and to speak to them and have fun with our content, but teach them something really good, too. So um, and taking stories that are um, that are written by a Native American and designed by a Native American has never been done with a health and wellness magazine. So it's been um, very powerful and um, very, um, and very passionate about it. And I, yeah, I love what I do. And the, the magazine's name is Na Native Wellness Life, correct? Yeah, Native Wellness dot Life. Yeah, so it's not a dot com, but yeah, we're. I mean, check us out on our website. There's a little uh, magazine that you can look at, and so yeah, it's a monthly magazine, and people buy it by a box of twenty five, fifty, seventy five, or a hundred, um, because they're usually large organizations that are buying it. I want to talk a little bit about uh, first of all how our audience can take part in our program tonight. Uh, you can uh, send us a question through the Facebook chat feature. We're getting some people commenting already, uh, uh, thanking us for bringing attention to this issue. One of the questions that first comes up, uh, William, I'll throw it to you, and uh, Deb, you can think about it as well. What, what bias do you think is faced by minorities with law enforcement? Let's talk specifically in Montana. You feel there is a, a prejudice, and the timing of this conversation uh, with the start of the uh, trial in um, Minnesota of uh, perhaps the most famous police brutality case in U.S. history uh, brings to mind the prejudices that minorities may face here in Montana. William, what do you think? Yeah, so I think the word prejudice is kind of overused, and, and, and let me explain. So we all are prejudiced. Prejudice is broken down into two words or, or two, two pieces. It's pre, which means we do it before, and then we judge, which we all do. I think the problem with prejudice is this, is that prejudice is okay until you use it to act maliciously against someone. So if I prejudge you and I act maliciously towards you, that creates the negative connotations of prejudice. This. However, in my place, 
then I think it's okay because like, again, we only know what we know and we grow up in our, in our own cultures. We grow up in our own families. So if you've never been experienced to any other ethnicities or any other minorities, you may have some of those prejudices that come with TV or social media. But if you're willing to see me as a person once you once you meet me and judge me for the content of my character, not the color of my skin, I think it makes it a lot easier. So, you know, again, I think it happened some in Montana just because of ignorance. But I'm hoping that programs like this will help to to push that out of our community. And Deb, how about you as a, a young Native American uh, woman growing up in Montana, spending a lot of time here in Billings, moving away and coming back? Uh, have you encountered uh, that same prejudice? maybe not just with law enforcement, but in your day-to-day -day, uh, life. I, it's there, of course it is. And especially coming back to Montana, I feel like it's a, a little bit behind the times from the other states I'm at. Um, but um, an example was just the other day, I was jogging by Billings Clinic and there was a man in a wheelchair in the middle of an intersection and people couldn't get around him. They were just honking and, and trying to get around him, but no one was getting out to help him. And so I'm jogging by going, what? So um, I ended up running over into the middle of the street and said, Did you need, do you need help? He goes, yeah, just take me to the to the side. Well, he was a he's a Native American elder and he's in a wheelchair with one leg trying to push the wheelchair. And so there was all these cars there and I was just like, why didn't anyone stop? I just don't get it. So yeah, I think programs like this are really good and I think it could help educate and help people. Well, thank you for stopping. Were people honking at you to get out of the way as well? Everyone just stopped. It was just, it was just weird. <laughs> I don't get it. Um, people are thanking us for doing this show and bringing a light to it. Why is it that, why is it important that we talk about this uh, of our, what we encounter here in, uh, in Billings? I grew up, when I grew up here in Billings, uh, and I was born and raised here in Billings. Uh, my family was Jewish. And so I guess I experienced some of that prejudice, but I was too young to realize really what was happening. It was just the way it was. But it really wasn't until I got to maybe junior high or high school that I realized that uh, people didn't view me the same way as uh, maybe someone that came from a Catholic family or a, a Protestant family. And I was I came from a mixed family, but... Um, it just depends on how, how, how it feels walking in your shoes. And, and William, why is it important really that we just open this conversation as, as uncomfortable as it might be? I think, I, think you, I think you already hit it, right? I think it's really important. There's no growth in comfort. And I think a lot of times when we get comfortable, we get lax and we, and we choose not to grow. And if we really want to be the community that we say we are in the city of Billings, in the state of Montana, we're going to have to experience some un uncomfortable times, have these conversations. But on the other side of that is a diverse community that's welcoming to those who want to experience something new. Deb, anything to add to that as I uh, jump to the next uh, topic? <laughs> No, I totally agree. I, I think, you know, educating people is, is the best way. One of the things that uh, the good doctor mentioned in the program is that he, he gave a, a, a lot of a lists of the most, uh, is it uh, discriminated against or the group and elderly was the top. I picked obese out of that category. Um, what did you pick? And I, did you, were you surprised that it was elderly? And I guess, uh, it's kind of the unconscious bias against the elderly, but that that was a surprise to me. Was it to either of you? Yeah, I'll defer to you. Okay. <laughs> I said Nate are um, African American, and okay. I was very very surprised it was elderly. But my mom, who's elderly, is sitting beside me watching it. She said elderly. <laughs> so she <had> it. <laughs> Perhaps if I had. Uh, I, I guess I wasn't thinking about it right, but if, if you were in the job market and you were an elder, an elder person, uh, I think you would you would find uh, right away you would run up against that. Let's say we have a couple of other uh, questions. Uh, question about implementation in schools. Um, I know William that you you told us the other day that you travel to Wolf Point once a month to contact uh, and do a little interaction with the youth up there on. on that reservation. Tell us about that, about uh, implementation of some of these uh, thoughts and practices in school.
Yeah, so I, I do travel to Wolf Point. I, there are a few other schools, Huntley Project, that I work with or other schools around the state. And again, we're just starting to, we're starting to get work on it from the periphery. And we're talking about, you know, as I mentioned earlier, things about resiliency, things about self-awareness, being proud of who you are, as opposed to, you know, looking at it from a negative connotation of that we're not being inclusive and those type things. So, you know, uh, Wolf Point is, is, is near and dear to my heart because there is a, there's a special group of kids up there. And uh, it's, it's really interesting when I go and just to see that they they feel the importance, they feel the inclusivity that um, that I'm bringing up there to them. And, and they want to get out in the world and show people that they're superstars as well. So I really enjoy the experience with the kids. Deb, I asked you uh, last week when we were first talking about uh, your interaction with the, the youth on the uh, Indian reservations and I find it interesting that your magazine uh, has a, you have a page just for kids. In fact, that's what it's called. Yeah. Uh, what's been the, the interaction with that? They love it. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of the reservations I get at the, the schools there love the just for kids page. So they've been contacting us wanting posters and different, different things with it. So yeah, it's been, it's my favorite page <laughs> to design. Um, I tell my brother, he, he, he writes like a fifth grader and I design like a fifth grader. <laughs> but it's so much fun. It's just, yeah, I can just, I can just take off and I know the kids will love it, adding a lot of color and then a lot of culture to it too. What's the message for parents, William, if they're watching with their kids tonight and they see this and there's going to be lots of questions I, I can imagine, but uh, as a parent who uh, you're dealing with a, one of your children that have dealt with this on a, uh, day to day basis. What's the, what's the message there just to start the conversation? Yeah. So I think first the first thing is starting the conversation. Once the conversation is started, be open. And then secondly, and most importantly, be honest about what you don't know. Right. I think a lot of times we try to fill in the gaps because we don't want our kids to go off with make their own conclusions. But I think it's really important to be honest about what you don't know. And then the last thing is seek knowledge. Right. There are a lot of individuals. I mean, the beautiful part about Montana is that we do have other ethnicities that's willing and able to talk to their, you know, talk to their their specific thing. I think I think you seek that. And I let, and I think you help kids to seek that because when they see it, then they're not afraid of it and, and they don't make misconceptions about who or what people are. It's one thing to say, well, be open. But it's harder to be open. We all carry so much baggage and weight with us, everything we do. Um, it's kind of hard just to you know, say, oh, yeah, I have an open mind. But do we really? Mm -hmm. I mean, you kind of have to guard against having a closed mind. But uh, we come across that naturally. It's kind of maybe our defense mechanisms. How how do we how do we become more open? That's an easy thing to say, but uh, really, where the rubber hits the road, it's a difficult uh, task. So I think the first thing to being open is making sure that you don't try to close others off, right? And so I, I talk about this all the time. We only know what we know, and you don't know what I know. So if you're at least willing to listen, so that's the that's the key to being open. The ability to listen and, and being open to something that might be different than what you have experienced in life. And I think that's where we get lost a lot of times. We just know what we know and we believe it and nothing else can be right. So that's what I would say. If you actively listen to the things that are around you, I think you can learn a, a heck of a lot. I think uh, one of the most important pieces of advice I ever heard was, I think it was Mike Mansfield that said, listen. <laughs> You may not always be right. <laughs> and I think uh, listening is a, a lost art. Uh, everyone likes to do most of the talking anymore. And I think you can actually listen, uh, learn more by just listening than uh, taking up all the time. Uh, any, any comments there? It's just, it, it's hard. I mean, uh, we all want, want to be good listeners, but that's a craft in itself. I guess my comment on that is, yeah. Uh, listening is a really good trait um, that everyone should have. It's hard to do. But the other thing is um, treat others like you would like to be treated. This is what I always told my kids. So and I think about it. Yeah. How do you want to be treated? You know, I think just thinking about that helps. <laughs> so um, if people have uh, questions, they can put it in the comment page. That's what the yeah, if you have a question, please leave it in the comments. We will try to include as many questions 
as you have and uh, pick the brain of our uh, of our two guests who are doing an uh, awesome job in sharing their so uh, what's the next step how can we take this to action William this is probably a question you get a lot um, what's the important next step yeah so I always say <laughs> Uh, goals are just that until you write them down and actually start to do implementation steps to get them moving forward, whether it's in your business or your household. And so, you know, we're doing this, these things now, but I think we have to have actionable items that we literally can create checklists that turn into our overall culture. Because again, you know, we're walking in a space where a lot of people are uncomfortable. So I think having written goals and doing things differently allow you to look back and see your successes. So, you know, I would highly encourage people create those checklists so that you can have things that you so you have things in place and you can see things as you start to progress towards excuse me progress towards a culture of inclusivity i think it's very important deb how about you did you set some goals i mean i'm so impressed by uh both of you and uh, how you've taken the bull by the horns and uh deb with your business and uh william with your uh be better world did you set some goals, Deb, when you, you were first starting out? Because it's yeah. a tough thing to start and have the confidence, I guess, just to get get your vision underway. A lot of people think about it. One of the reasons I moved back to Billings was I was watching the news and heard about the different problems that they were having with getting um, the middle school named uh, after a Native American chief. And that bothered me. And I thought, I have to go back. I have to go back. I have work to work that needs to be done. I didn't know what. Um, I didn't know I'd be opening up two businesses here. But just knowing that they were having that conversation about a Native American name on a school. And I came from, I was in Minnesota for 11 years. There's a million schools there with Native American names and streets with Native American names. It's like, come on. So, yeah. That yeah, that was one of my goals was to start helping move this along. We had a question there or a comment by one of our uh, viewers that said they liked uh, what Dr. Mark said is ask someone who knows you what biases they see when they encounter you. And maybe that's a good way for some self-reflection. Maybe your best friend can help you with that. You find some uh, wisdom in that approach, William? I, I, absolutely. I mean, because that's just reflective learning, right? Um, you, you, you give a chance, to, a person a chance to reflect for, for, reflect about their experiences, their opportunities in life. And again, I think it opens your eyes to some things that you may, may or may not have seen. And I think you start to view the world in a different scope. Yeah, viewing the world in a different scope. That was maybe my aha moment uh, from uh, this uh, discussion tonight by Dr. Marks. Um, kind of getting down we've been going for almost a half hour now which is uh, amazing to me how quickly things move along on i think it's like a hyper speed on facebook time <laughs> goes twice as fast at least it does when i'm reading facebook i look down and go, oh my gosh what happened in the last half hour and you just get locked into that uh, how about some uh some some final thoughts or and maybe they don't have to be your final thought but as uh, one th one thing deb you mentioned to me as we were discussing things last week how important it is to get out of your silo, I think you called it. Get out of your comfort zone. And in many cases, get out of your city, your state. Go see how other people live, but do it with our eyes wide open. Exactly. And I've lived all over the U.S., like I said. And each place I lived, I could see what was going on there. There may not be Native Americans down south, but there's other races. And it's just, and to see people getting treated like we are, and it's just, it was interesting. And so coming back, it's you have this different perspective. And I think that's what's opened my eyes probably more than anything is just being somewhere outside of Montana. And William, one thing that Dr. Marks mentioned was it's kind of a guilt trip. I mean, when, when you talk about these biases that people carry around with them unconsciously, and then you start to think about it, it's like, well, don't be, don't feel guilty about it, but it's kind of na natural. You know, that you feel, well, I didn't realize, I'm sorry. Um, as you said, recognition, recognizing the problem is half of the battle. I, I think it's more than half the battle. And uh -huh. I think it's really, 
I think it's really, really important when you're talking about this, that you if you recognize it, you can change it. If you don't recognize it or you choose not to recognize it, then I don't think you can take a step in the, in, in, in a forward direction. So I, I encourage people, you know, you, you kind of talked about closing thoughts. One of the things I always say in any tough situation where you're talking about growth, approach it with grace. Right. Because give the person on the other side of the conversation just a tad bit more grace than you normally would. I think you have stretched the front conversation a much further than you than than normal. We can all, all use a little more grace in the world. I think I like that growth with grace. Uh, I want to ask both of you. Uh, just tell us how people can get in touch with you. If they if you said something nice, somebody wants to follow up with you. Deb, what's the best way to uh, communicate with you? Two different ways, either through either one of my websites, uh, info at nativewellness.life or Debbie Dijarlet Design. <laughs> she probably won't be able to spell that, but, <laughs> but I just, go ahead. <laughs> just type in Debbie's Design, it comes up. What a good search oh, engine these there days. You go. That's all you need to know. Uh, very impressive, also, with your uh, Native American graphic artists. And uh, it's just a beautiful thing to look at. William, how about you? What's the best way to? Uh, communicate with you. Yeah, so you can reach me at bebetterworld.org or you can just reach me at william at bebetterworld.org. And before you guys get off, I really want to thank this station for taking the opportunity, taking an uncomfortable chance to host this because there are a lot of people who are shying away. And just the fact that you guys have stepped to the forefront, you should be applauded for. Thank you very much. I agree. Yeah. Debbie, thank you. And William, thank you again for your time. Um, something tells me uh, we're going to do this again soon. Uh, this is a conversation that's ongoing. It's not a start to finish one, but one we're going to just pause in the middle and uh, maybe contemplate everything that, that Dr. Marks talked about tonight. It was almost too much to, it's like my brain's full, my brain's full. I can't, I can't uh, process it so much, but uh, maybe as, we think, as it sinks in, we can all uh, maybe... Uh, do this again with a uh, forward the conversation a little more. Again, thank both of you and thanks everybody watching on uh, Facebook Live tonight. Hope we uh, uh, maybe got you thinking. That's the whole the whole goal, right? Mm -hmm. Make Absolutely. everyone a little bit uncomfortable uh, thinking about uh, the biases that we all carry around with us. So, uh, William, Deb, thanks again. It was a pleasure talking with you tonight. And for folks on Facebook, thanks for joining us. Take care.